So KG had never seen me play against Mike. We in Chicago. You know, it's my rookie year. And I got about 24 going into the fourth quarter. JR is having a good game. So I'm quiet. I always stay quiet when I play my and talk too much. So as we come out the timeout, just I'm on, y'all. Y'all, I can't even explain it. We come out of the fourth quarter, KG like, man, keep going at his ass. Serve him. He can't guard you. Yo, keep killing that nigga, yo. Keep killing that nigga. Boning him, yo. Straight up. You have a good game, Joe. Keep going. I was quiet. I'm looking at him like. Chip, because Mike was literally right there. The nigga right here. Mike can hear me. So I double battle it. Yeah. Okay. Keep going at him. Wow. He's strong for this dude, man. So as I say that, I feel it. So Mike looked at me, looked at KG. Hands on hips, legs locked. The nigga stared at me for about 15 seconds. I was like, Mike, he don't know the rules of the game, man. He's just a young puppy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, look, Mike, he don't really know how we... I see him and Mike having a conversation. So he's like, he don't really know he excited. Whatever. So now MJ on the back leg joint. Okay, you talking? Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, huh? And Mike looked at him being like, okay. He looked at me like, okay. I said, what you looking at me like that for, right? <laughs> I can't even really describe the next like six to seven minutes of play, yo. <laughs> Came into the, went to the fourth quarter, man. That man got about eight, 17, quick. We down 25 now. It was just that two. Mad, looking at KG, looking at me, looking at KG. It got bad quick, <laughs> yo. I come to the joint, and then they know this. When you come and you've been on the run, when you not got back on the floor, got back, had to rebound, had, and you feel like you on defense all the time, you come to the bench like this. <sighs> so I was like, Jay, man, my bad, my, my bad, dog. I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm sorry. See you later. It's cool, man. I told you, just shut your ass up, man. You're not fucking. <laughs> so, so you got in between the gate right there where you like, damn. And next thing you know, we over there like this. And Mike came down. Okay, young fella. Okay, okay, damn, young fella. Damn, damn. Y'all, y'all done? Damn, young fella. <laughs> Never talk shit to Mike ever again in life. Knicks have no one to thank but themselves and the close scrutiny of the media. Headlines like these make this more than a game. It's personal. Don't ever look Michael Jordan in the eye because he takes that as a challenge. Like your parents used to tell you, man, don't ever look a dog in the eye because he'll bite you because he takes that as a challenge. The same thing. About four years ago, I was playing against him and we were up about 15 points with about three minutes left in the game. And I looked at him and I smiled. And he got really mad at me. He goes, oh, you smiling? You think you won this game? And Michael Jordan must have scored like 13 of the next points. We didn't even let nobody on our team score. They won the game by one. And he told me, said, Jay, you're a good player. But don't ever challenge me again. I went, woo. His way is to befriend them, to soften them up, uh, to try to feel, uh, make them feel like he cares about them, and then he goes out there and physically tries to destroy him. Van Gundy said that I was a con man, which I've never seen con man use in a, in a, um, in a polite or, or respectful way. For some reason, league-wide, it's important to be liked by him. I have no idea why. You take negative criticism in a, in, in a, I'd take it in a positive way to go out and, and prove a point. I try to make the, the game uh, perfection. I try to make it a perfect game for myself. The game is 
evolved to be more of a mental challenge for me than a physical. You know, and that's one of the reasons that I still play the game because I can challenge myself. I'm sure that uh, Michael will use this for motivation. The first time the Knicks and the Bulls met uh, back on the 21st of January in Chicago, Michael Jordan lit up the Knicks for 51 points. A sensational all-around game. 51 points, still an NBA high for the season, and when it ended, Jordan lashed out verbally at Nick coach Jeff Van Gundy. Michael visibly upset that Van Gundy had said Jordan uses his friendships and stature to lull some of his opponents, that he cons them. And Michael got maximum motivation out of it. We talked about this episode with Jeff Van Gundy. Well, I really don't want to revisit that again. I, I, you know, I've, I've explained myself a few too many times, actually. But I, I would just say this is that uh, I have great respect for them as a group. Uh, but at the same time, I have my beliefs. I have never said anything that I, I don't believe. I believe everything I've told people. So I'm not going to apologize for anything I've said. And at the same time, I want to temper what I say from now on because I want to, whatever I say, I want it to go to benefit our team and not hurt our team. Whether it did or not the last game, uh, that's anybody's guess. Uh, but I just want to make sure I temper my honesty a little bit more, say what I say to help our team and leave the rest alone. Well, Jeff Van Gundy intended to send a message to his team, and that was don't show too much respect to Michael Jordan. But Michael is a master at the mental game, and he turned all of that around in his favor. And now, Michael says it's personal. They tried to take our manhood. They beat us up. They pounded on us. Feet aren't going away without a fight. Alonzo Mourning was doing a lot of talking the entire series. And when he elbowed Scotty and he, Scotty got that bump on his head, I think Michael kind of took it personally. And I think that set Michael off. So when he came back into practice after that weekend on Tuesday, he said, guys, this one's a personal test. When we come out there today, I want this game to be a grudge match. It's personal, but I've been safe. You gotta go out and play with a lot of intensity, a lot of heart. All right, right thanks, Marv. I talked to Michael Jordan about the loss on Monday. He said some good things happened to that. He said the bad things were we got beaten and we got beaten up, and our pride took a hit. He said, but what that did is that brought our whole team together as a group and really improved our focus. He said even championship teams need a wake-up call, and he said that was there. Now, Michael has been saying all week that this series is personal. If you watch here as the two captains meet in the middle of the court, I guess you'll see that this is what Michael meant by it's all personal. Watch Michael. 51 New York Knicks did it in the finals. And the 1994 Denver Nuggets here is Jordan. Michael putting a signature on that and the star. Jordan off the head fake. But Jordan keeps moving, heading on the pick and roll, but then cutting quickly across the top. Jordan had lots of room to operate. And he made sure he would get high in the air and then stepping back on the nice screen from Jason Caffey to launch one from the rim. Here's a beautiful fast burn. Oh, Michael Jordan, so sharp, so quick, making but Sean Leonard worked extremely hard at the defensive end. A final second shot to end the first half. Well, as cold as Michael has been in this second quarter, still going to take that shot, fade away, nothing but net. Terrific job for Chicago. And that, a basket that hurts. A final second shot to end the first half. Yeah. For Hannah Storm in the Prudential Halftime Report. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Hicksway is back defending on Ron Hoffer. Shot clock down to three. Jordan. Yes. The four players having trouble creating anything. It always seems to be Michael Jordan winding up with the basketball with the shot clock winding down. As it appeared, he had something to say to Pat Riley on the other way back and Pat Riley getting a kick. I mean, it was personal. You know, they, they, they can't come in our house and do the same thing they did to us in Miami from a basketball sense. You know, and if that meant from a physical sense, then we have to stand up and be accounted for. You know, I mean, it was the same thing when Detroit used to do the same thing to us, you know, come in and beat us up. At some point in time, it became personal where we had to stand up on our own two feet and, and, and you know, fight the bully 
from a basketball sense, not from a physical sense. Well, he's only made 14 in this quarter. He's got 29 in the game. He leads the league at 34. He led the league last year at 30. Swings left, shoots right. 12-footer on the way, no. The rebound is off and he's grabbing. Here comes Jordan. Jordan front court. What will he do this time? He goes all the way. Puts it up and in. Throughout the building, they're standing in the aisles and high-fiving. Their fourth two-point lead of the game. That was Pippen the steal. Levingston, Pippen, and Jordan. And now the Bulls have their biggest lead. I mean, if there was a force meter on dunks, he just broke the meter. Time out. A wise choice by Kevin Lockery. This is a 20. Chicago Stadium roars to life. What's happening is that the Dobermans are being sent out to go to work. And that's what causes this kind of easy basket. Look at the force of that ball as it went through the net. try to send a statement. You know, we're trying to make sure they don't gain anything on us. It's like fighting your big brother or little brother. You know, you gotta let them know who you are. You, this is where you belong. Jordan trying to shake oh, off oh. starts. Oh, what a move by Jordan! It counts! I don't care where you think you think you are. <laughs> this is where you belong. And every game was like that, proving ground. You know, trying to gain that extra edge. Today, will Michael haunt Cleveland's new house? No team has succumbed to the talents of Jordan more than the Cavs. In his last Cleveland appearance, he hit this shot, ending their season, crushing their dreams. A haunting occurrence known too well around here. And put back home, it did fall. Now Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller having a go at it. And I mean, we got fist rolling. Here come the benches. Bo Hill is out there. Uh -oh. Bill Jackson's going out there. There will be fines handed out all over the place here. But more importantly, what in the world ignited this? Oh, 
Michael's yelling at Longley too right there. Well, Michael, does he want to win this game or what? He's going crazy right now. A good competitor always evaluate his opponent. And you understand for what he really is, but you never, you never try to give him confidence. You try to take it at all times. And sometimes it's easier to take confidence as opposed, and sometimes it's harder. But mentally, I got to find a way. And sometimes you have to trick yourself. But that's all right. Let's see if all that trash talking starts when it's 0-0 zero, zero, instead of five, six-point lead. That's where it starts. That's the sign of a good man. If you can talk shit when it's even score or talk shit when you're behind score. When you're ahead, it's easy to talk. When I think of you, and you had this unbelievable career in the NBA, you're one of the great scorers of all Thank time. You. Great Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up until relatively recently, you had more three-pointers than anybody. But when I think of you, I think of trash talking. I think of you um, going back and forth with other players. Yes. I started talking as soon as I got into the league, but I had a bad experience. What was the bad experience? Well, my rookie year. Uh-huh. We were playing the Chicago Bulls, and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. Okay. And we were playing an ex exhibition game in some obscure place. And most veterans do not like to play in exhibition games. They want to get to the real thing. I'm a wide-eyed, energetic rookie, and we're playing this exhibition game, and Michael's going through the motion. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan, the guy everyone's talking about, who's supposed to be able to walk on water, you're out here killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. <laughs> He's like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right. Michael, who do you think you are? <laughs> the great Michael Jordan? That's right. There's a new kid on town, right? Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, I have 10, and he has four points, right? And I'm doing all this talking. He's like, OK. End of the, end of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. <laughs> And I ended up with 12. <laughs> so he outscored me 40 to 2. And as he's walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful. You never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, black Jesus. I'm so sorry. Now, this is a crazy scenario, crazy story. You guys are going to be cracking up when I tell you that. So, real quick, I was in, it's 1995. I am out here in L.A., and I'm uh, filming MTV in the summertime, and I'm doing a movie. So, you know, a lot of things is popping for me. So, I'm, I'm really, I'm really on my ground. I'm, I'm, on, I'm popping, so it's, it's going down. So I'm on a lot, I'm on the Warner lot, but I'm on another side of the Warner lot. And one of the PAs come up to me and he's like, yo, Bill, did you see the dome that they made for Michael Jordan? I said, I said, Mike on this lot? I'm looking, they was like, yo, he like in lot B or whatever. He's doing Space Jam. And they made him a dome. I said, you gotta be kidding me. They made Michael Jordan a dome. They said, yes. It's in the middle of the parking lot. Warner Brothers made Michael Jordan a goddamn dome, right? So he can play basketball when he's not shooting. Life moves on. A couple weeks, a couple days later, I'm out having dinner. Mike is dead. So I see Mike. Mike is doing his thing, cigar. You know, cool ass Mike, right? So Mike is like, yo, Bill, what's going on? I'm like, I'm shooting my movie. And, uh, you know, I'm on Warner Lot. He said, me too. I'm shooting Space Jam. He said, yo, won't you come through and, and who? What you doing tomorrow? I said, nothing. Shit. I'm getting an invite to play ball with Michael Jordan. Whatever I had on my on my on my on my uh, uh, itinerary is dead. So cool. Now, let me tell you how dope this day was. And the only reason I truly remember this because I was watching the last dance and it popped back in my head. Cause so many funny, crazy moments happened in my career. I just gotta share this with my team, right? But the dopest part about it was the wood floor was the North Carolina floor. I said, oh, they put the parquet in this joint in the middle of the parking lot in the dark. Cool. So, so they got their five, right? It's, it's, 
it, it, let me tell you, let me tell you who is there that I can remember that was crazy. Right? You had Jason Kidd, Tyus Edney, you had Grant Hill, you had uh, um, Glenn Rice, uh, and a couple of other, Alonzo Morning, I think. It was a couple, it was a lot of really good players, and they had some young dudes that was sort of like getting ready to play in the college. Okay, cool. So I I wasn't in the first game, so I never forget this. And if you think I'm lying, the only other comedian that was there was Damon Wayans. This is an absolute true story, right? I get in the game. I'm on my team. Oh my God. Mike is bringing up the fucking ball, bro. And I'm going down the court with my idol, Michael Jordan, right? And I'm bugging, because in my head, I'm going, this can't be real. Because I feel like I'm in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm literally inside 2K, and 2K went out. So I'm in the game. Mike is coming up the court, tongue out, everything, swagger, swagger, baby gold chain. You know what I'm saying? Always look. He never had it. was never long enough. It was just tight. Just a little bit right there where you can get a rash. But whatever so i never forget this i never forget this tyus etney came down the court and did a move on michael jordan that was so motherfucking crazy so he came down and with the ball in his left hand right so mike is mike mike is mike is is cutting him off right mike is cutting him off coming across like this to shut him down right so he comes down he, he drilled he drives hard with his left hand, real, real hard. And so Mike goes that way and he crosses back and up fakes, and, but he don't give up his dribble. And Mike jumps through the dome and everybody started laughing. I never forget this. I never forget this. Cause I said, oh shit. Cause the move was so filthy. He made Mike bite on the jumper, but he, he just, he went up and he dropped the ball and he still had it and went for the layup. Mike said, give me the fucking ball. I never heard Mike curse. Give me the fucking ball. I said, oh my God, he turned, Mike turned into the Hulk mixed with Iron Man, mixed with Thor. Give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. He came down. Hear me? He came down and scored the next nine buckets from everywhere. Threes, twos, dunks, reverse. It, it, yo, it, it, it was so, it was so bananas, bro. And one, I never, <laughs> I, remember, I remember one of the ball players said, "God damn, man, you went and woke that boy up, man. Why you wake him Jay up, man? When he woke Michael Jordan up." into another dude in front of my eyes, right? So get this. The game, they win. Mike's, my team wins the game, and I'm on the side with Mike, right? Me and Mike kicking in the stuff. So Mike was like, yo, me and Mike, just me and Mike chilling, smoking a cigar. Mike is kicking and whatever. And I will, I will, I, first I said, thank you. You know, I said, Mike, man, this was a dope out as opportunity, man, that you know you invited me up and we had a good time, man. He was like, man, come on, baby, you fan, bro. Don't trip. You know what I'm saying? Right now, man. And right then, he said, I was fan. I wanted to ask for it. And I said, Bill, if you if you ask for an autograph right now, you're gonna play yourself and you go, you probably never gonna get a chance to go back to this dog. And so I didn't ask for it, and I was right there. And at the time, I didn't have kids. If I, if I had my son at the time, I, I, I could have just lied and said it really would mean a lot to my son. But I ain't had no sons. So I would have felt crazy if he said no. If I said, man, um, could you write something for my son? He'd be like, nigga, you ain't got no kids. So <laughs> it it would have really been for me. So, I, uh, you know, that's one of my regrets, but definitely a true story, man. And I love Michael Jordan, man. Thank you for being who you are and working so hard and being the GOAT and leaving a legacy for all of us to enjoy and to be inspired by. We love you, MJ. Peace.